Uh, Mr. President and members, I'm happy to have as our guest here today Philip Montgomery, who I would ask to come forward if they will, James Montgomery, Lawrence Montgomery, Violet Montgomery, Linda Robinson, Robert Robinson, Karen Williams, Tracy Tyree, Lawrence L.J. Tyree, all of which are brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews, great nieces, great nephews of the late and former Senator Georgia Montgomery Davis Powers, in addition, Raul Cunningham and Carolyn Tandy, close friends and confidants of Senator Powers. Would you please welcome them? The floor, and they are granted privileges of floor for today and day only. Senator from Jefferson 33. Mr. President, you may recall, and the members may recall, earlier in the session, um, I introduced a resolution honoring former Senator Georgia Davis Powers, but also in that resolution requested that a plaque be affixed to her desk to memorialize her service here, to acknowledge her service here, and to hold her in veneration for the, what she's meant to the Commonwealth, what she's meant to her community, what she's meant to the nation, in fact. We all know the history of Georgia Montgomery Davis Powers, so I'm not going to recount that history here. And it's gonna be recounted over and over again in school books and speeches and annual events and so forth and so on. But we all recognize and we all understand the greatness that resided in this individual and what she did for the Commonwealth and for all people. She's iconic. So it's only fitting that we today take pause to acknowledge her in this way. The Senate, in my opinion, could not hold anyone in higher esteem than to take a bronze plaque as approved by the entire body, joined in by the entire body, to acknowledge this service and acknowledge this great, great person. So, Mr. President, with that being said, I would request then that the ceremony, if I may call it that, began in terms of affixing indeed that plaque to the desk, at which time I re re would request, Mr. President, that we be allowed to take photos and those usual things that are necessary and proper. And after that, or should I say before that, let me yield to the Senator from Franklin. Senator from Franklin. Mr. President, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment and tell you what a precious, precious lady George, Georgia Davis Powers was. Not only was she my dear friend, she was a member of this body when I was downstairs. And the thing about Georgia Davis Powers, there was no fear in that lady regarding what she knew in her heart she wanted to say and do, and she did it at times even taking on the individual who's, who's now speaking. Because she really believed she had a charge in her life, and her life reflects the product of that charge. I really wish that many of you had known Georgia Davis Pires. I'm talking to the members of the Senate for a moment, Mr. President. Because, and some of you may have met her, I'm sure the president has personally met her. And, and she was not only a gracious lady, but again, 
what I admired about her, of all the years that I knew her, and all the years that I watched her not only perform on the floor of the city, I watched her perform down there in the rotunda, as well as on the political trail, as well as standing before crowds. She was something else. She was married to a gentleman who was in the business of bonding people who got out of prison. Well, while I was in office, I, we introduced a bill doing away with bail bondsmen. But Georgia Davis, one thing about her, she knew that it was a good program. And in spite of the fact that it put her husband out of business, she still supported it. Because you have no idea how much control bail bondsmen had over the operation of our judicial system and our prosecutorial system in those days. They not only elected prosecutors and judges, but they had influence with them after they got elected. And we put them out of business. And the thing I'm proud about Kentucky that Georgia Davis Pyard helped us to accomplish, Kentucky is the only state in the United States that makes it a crime to get somebody out of jail for a profit. And Georgia Davis Spires is one of the individuals that helped us inaugurate that in Kentucky. There's not much more I could say than's already been said and, and, and is reflected in the life of this lovely lady. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator from Jefferson, 33. Adjust it. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, at this time, I would like to yield to the Senator from Carter. Senator from Carter. I'd just like to say um, to my tribute to this dear woman, I did have the opportunity to know her. Uh, as I was a staffer in the House at one time back uh, as a young, much younger lawyer, and she was a woman in the Senate. And uh, being a woman in the Senate is something that uh, I aspired to be from the time I worked in Senator Nelson Allen's campaign in about the second grade. And I found myself asking her for advice and encouragement of which she always gave freely. And I tell you, she was, she was tough. And I got to thank her for that uh, several times since my election to the Senate in 2009, where I've always aspired to be. And you know, uh, there's not many of us women here just like, uh, but she was truly the pioneer that uh, helped this young woman see that we could be here. And I just want to thank her family for the support and encouragement in allowing her to do that and in uh, empowering those of us who aspired to do that. And I think the placement of this plaque, I hope we've got girls in the gallery today, we have pages and staff you know, I, I just hope that it's a reminder that this is what you can do. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter what color your skin is or what your background is. You have something to offer and you can aspire to service. So uh, I just want to thank her. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator Jefferson, for um, allowing a permanent, a permanent reminder for the girls of this Commonwealth. Thank you. Any other members seeking recognition? Senator from actually Fayette 12 at the desk of the Senator from Campbell. Senator from Fayette 12. Thank you, Mr. President. I too wanted to rise as one of the few women who have been a member of the State Senate to honor the memory of the late Senator Georgia Powers. She has been most fascinating to me. I have read books that she has written. I have read books about her. But more importantly, I'm very happy that sh this plaque is going to be placed today on the desk that I served from for 16 years. And she and I 
always had that in common. Whenever she was here visiting, we would always talk about that. And it gave me very much a sense of history to be able to be in that seat that she had occupied so long. It also makes me think, Mr. President, that as the Senator from Carter alluded to earlier, that no matter what our race, what our gender, what our socioeconomic background, what our intelligence level, any of us can make a difference if we have that passion to do so. And I just wanted to honor Senator uh, Georgia Powers and uh, just respect her memory today. And I'm very thankful that this plaque is being placed on her desk and mine. Thank you, Senator from Fayette 12. Senator from Fayette 13 at the Senator from Scott's desk. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. All of us know that we don't get to this place without having many mentors and many supporters and many people helping, helping us along the way. Um, and certainly, Senator Powers uh, was part of that body for me. I have known Senator Powers for over 30 years, have worked with her, uh, and just the wisdom and courage and strength that she displayed, the counsel that she shared with me over the years, uh, and the help uh, that she provided me has been immeasurable. Uh, she truly is a great woman, uh, and her history uh, and her effort and her work extends far beyond just the Senate, and as, it, and as has been indicated earlier, has had a national significance on, on these great United States. I am proud to be part of her legacy. I consider myself to be Georgia's legacy. Uh, and just am honored to be in this chamber today uh, as we extend to her the bronze medal. And I say, Georgia, God bless you, and your memory will live on uh, in this state and in these halls forever. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator from Jefferson, 33. Mr. President, I think it's all been said. Just one last comment, and that is that I think there are many people in this body that this is just not a ceremony, but they take it very personal. You've heard the commentary that's been made here from the floor that this is more than acknowledgement. This is a thank you from those individuals that really truly knew Georgia Davis Powers. So that being said, I would request at this time that the plaque be affixed. And I understand that during recess, we'll be in a position to take positions, uh, I'm sorry, pictures at that particular time. Uh, thank you for your indulgence. Senator from Jefferson 33, if I could ask the Senator from Jefferson 35, Senator from Carter, Senator from Jefferson 37, and the Senator from Franklin, as I understand this, we are going to place this on that desk. If you all could just slide out of the row and...
Senator from Jefferson 33, I think it was appropriate that we did applaud. Not a moment in silence, but a moment in gratitude and appreciation to Ms. Georgia Davis Powers and to her family for her life, her contributions, and your all's contributions through her. So again, we thank you all. And I want to say this, from the day we had the memorial service, I don't know if you've seen it, I've had this on my desk ever since we've had yeah. it next to me. But we do thank you and we do appreciate your time and attendance here today. And I wish we would do this again. Let us have a round of applause, not in condolences, but in the memory of a wonderful life and a wonderful lady and all she gave to this state. Senator Jefferson, 33, do you have further need? No further need except to say thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, and thank you and to bye. the family.